Hello and welcome. It is day number 15 of month number 8. This is the Money Charts channel. Like always, all bets, trades of the like within each his own risk and their own reward. Yesterday, I'm not going to call it a crash, but others are. Dow Jones fell 800 points or 3.05%. And from the high of about 27,300, down close to 2,000 points. That's, that's between 5 and 10% down, but not in double digits. On RT, they're asking the question, what really drove the Dow crash? Crash. 3, 5%, 3% down, 6, 7, 8% from the high. That's... To me, it might be a go, might be going a little a bit overboard, but uh, it's it's a little bit of a decline nonetheless. Now, one thing I've noticed just in my like recommended videos, we have going undercover in Venezuela, foreign correspondent. Well, I'll be interested to see it. However, I do want to plug somebody who has put a very good job in showing as much as he can for what's going on in Venezuela. And uh, the gentleman's uh, YouTube handle goes by Indigo Traveler. Inside Venezuela, million dollar, millionaire neighborhood, abandoned mansions. Uh, inside Venezuela's biggest slum, where it's extremely dangerous. I'm going through as much as what he can show, showing the rich and the poor parts showing what is going down, what people are actually doing to help causes and uh, situations going on, talking to store owners as well. So just a lot of good information from somebody actually going on the scenes with the camera and getting good information. And there's a lot of videos total. I got, even just recently, I can see I haven't seen Walking the Streets of Caracas. I haven't seen that one. But we have inside empty Venezuelan supermarket, depressing. Ban for Venezuela for filming in public. I don't know. I'm, I was like surprised to see these were coming in because of that, but uh, they didn't, they just didn't appreciate what he was doing there. And for what's going on, and they're not a surprise. And uh, inside Venezuela, millionaire neighborhood, the pro-government uh, slum, and uh, just a lot of different stuff that's going on. He's been to other different parts, uh, Iraq, uh, just so many different uh, places uh, I guess that people normally don't aren't looking to explore right now. Okay, so back to the video. Can we call this a crash? I'm not calling this a crash. This is exitation of the 18 average of lows, which it did it yesterday. Well, it, it started it the day before. No, 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 it did it yesterday, because the whole gap thing, it's, I mean, technically speaking, this thing should have been a much bigger red candle down. This should have been like a red mark going all the way down here, but it was already down a bit when it gapped open yesterday, and then it just went down lower, closing at the lows of the day, as we can see here, as yesterday's session on the single hour time frame did that, and on the four minute, it was, as you can see, gapping lower and just a failed move. What was the volatility on the failed move intraday? Uh, a low of uh, 255 and a high of uh, 257. Not Nothing too major. Just about a percent or so. And uh, yeah, closing as we can see at the lows of the days. But that's all short term. Three day. Okay, well, let's see how we do here. This is a higher high. It's a higher low still, but as we can see in here, how we came back down to this before within the daily, of course, showing that establish this low, come up to resistance. Uh, maybe it's been down so much short term that it might consolidate a bit or maybe rally up to this maybe 25.87 handle. And, the, and it's one of those who know spots where, okay, yeah, they could do that. They could just break this, breach this support and just continue going down good again. We can see it go to like 24.9, and that would be a differential of like uh, 4.79 plus another uh, close to 80, which is like 500 and change. That's a couple percent. And that could happen in like just one quick period too. When we look at this on the weekly, there we go. We can see these lows again. And amongst it on the monthly, it is still in an uptrend. 
we have now three hit area amongst this level of general area of the 2668 handle as it did so first at the start of last year and then it did it again last October and then I guess you can even say even the fourth test here because it did it in April you can say it did it again here in July and now it's coming down a bit so we can see there's a little bit of resistance but the 18 so far has been holding and until it breaks down by the support barrier of like 23.4 and uh, 21.8 I guess we'll call it then that's that's going to be like okay this, that's bringing it from bullish to out of steam to neutral within the up run because we'd be possibly establishing a level of support but if we end up breaking down below this low then maybe we'd start talking about testing some of these other areas with the first one coming down. If, if we're unable to hold here at 21, uh, then we'd be looking to go to about 18 and change. But I think the better way of looking at this here would be, uh, let's go to uh, even the yearly time frame, just because, I mean, this is what the Dow has had. It's really only had one time, or well, three times actually, where it's been below the 18 lows. Very aggressively and wildly below it in uh, 1931 and then barely below it in 1974 and then barely below it in 2009. Right now the 18 average of lows on the yearly term time frame is in at uh, 14,842. And that 14,200 14, was the previous high way back when and way back when is this one here? I got my fourteen one ninety eight. I should even I should even said that because I I knew that number too. So that's like one of the areas of where it would come back down to again if it doesn't find the support there. Let's move on to uh, quickly to gold and silver, but they're not doing much since yesterday. As gold on the monthly chart is continuing its test at its Fibonacci level at the fifteen twenty two handle right now, and at fifteen eleven. So right Pierce it's barely below it. It has barely been above it, which was to be expected, not only to pierce above it, but just even get there after you see it was breaking by this clear level of resistance that uh, I've been talking about for those, a good amount of weeks now. And on the daily chart, we can see we've had uh, just a few days now just fidgeting around within this level. Any type of indications here on the hourly? Well, we've had a lot of resistance here on this time frame. It kind of got close to it here, not really, but it did definitely have a good pierce above it on its first attempt in it, but it had a huge fall afterwards. But it didn't take long to get back to it, but we resisted it nice here, it was corrected with the 18 successfully, and then we resisted it again, and holding and staying above the 18, and then barely getting above the highs now, but resisting it again. But meanwhile, short term, what it's doing, it's establishing a level of support with that resistance at 15.23, and then support here at about 15.08. We're silver on the hourly, a little choppy after this down move in here. Nah, not so, yeah. Well, I guess it's been holding this move from point low to point high. I, that's one way of saying it. So I don't like using the word choppy too much, but. I did, from this run in here, move above here, move below there. Obviously, no trend, and usually no trend is choppy. On the daily trend, there is a trend, and the trend, of course, is higher. After finding support at this line, magically, in 2019, it has just been uh, going up. And on the monthly term, as I've been mentioning, this is attempt number two, an exitation of the 18 average of highs since the top. Let's move on to a Bitcoin, which is holding in there on the monthly long-term analysis after a sideways month, showing a little bit more of the same. But for the final price of June 30th, July 31st, and August 15th, it's all been around the 10,000-ish number with uh, 10,760 here, closing last month at 10,085, and right now at 9,931 nothing um, nothing more than just holding in there really and this range that I talk about 9100 to uh, really the 13 to 14 thousand range up top it's still in play it's obviously now at the lower end of this range 
on the daily... Ch Hang on. Okay, that was a phone call that I took, and it was one of those spam calls, unfortunately. And then it was, was automated to the point where I was actually wanting to record it. Unfortunately, it was automated. Maybe I should have tried to push a few buttons. Either way, the uh, price of Bitcoin, after getting above here, barely going below the 18, above the 18 highs here, below it, within it, below it again, but not a new low, above it once, and, and now below it. So the choppy-ish sign, sideways action, those sort of deals in there. And they just happen to work within these Fibonacci lines I put in a long time ago, which has now found support literally or technically within this move as it has pierced below it with a low now at 9,470 amongst the Coinbase exchange. Okay, let's take a look at this on the shorter term. But to do this, I want to take a look at this in Binance among the tether which obviously not finding any support whatsoever on the second Fibonacci line on the way down. And as I've stated before, when you don't find support or resistance at key levels, look, it's going to keep going faster to a new, new leg, another leg lower or higher, in this case lower. And well, sure enough. And again, amongst it though, we're still haven't broken this range. So I'm still, are you still waiting to have, I hate to use the word confirmation because nothing's really guaranteed, but quote unquote, I guess, uh, a break of this low, really uh, noticeably below 9,000 for this to be a clear break of support. And uh, we look at this, say, eight hour, which is a third of a day. There we can see no support here. A lot of resistance here. And uh, it did resist and support it a little bit here on the way up. It came up there, resisted it, then supported it for four or so periods, and then all of this for about a dozen or so. But one period it hit it, next period it resisted it, hasn't seen it really. I guess it kind of resisted it here. Three hour, we can see a little bit of support resistance here, but you see it more clearly on the single hour. And when you look at patterns like this, this is why you can't be surprised to see this fall that occurred starting uh, yesterday at uh, yeah, 12 o'clock yesterday noon because you come down to this area and okay you're supporting it but you're not lifting higher no rallies are coming in and now you're resisting it here a little bit short term and a little bit of a red move down now you have your only real rally since at least this decline and this wasn't even much of a rally here in fact we haven't even had a good rally since this is just been amongst the best, tied with like well, all of this just choppy stuff in here. But the best rally we've had is a push from 10, 4 low up to like 10, 7. So that's like under 3%. But regardless, it came up to this 18 uh, or to this re resistance or support line as resistance. And as it was leaving this band, again, what how do we place the story of it? Well, it kind of did find support there in the definition of stop going lower I mean not really but it resisted it that's one of the ways it could do it too so again that when you see you put together probably gonna have a good move on the, uh, if it's not going to support it which of course it didn't in that sense and you see it showing the resistance signs that's why when you see it breaking down below here like this it's not a surprise that it would uh, of course, you'd be like, okay, well, that Fibonacci line at the 9,800 and all that. Yeah, probably pierced below it. That's what it has done. Well, except for this one, the 9,400 was the Coinbase low. This one here is nowhere near that. So let's just uh, look more into that. Yeah, this was a low here at 9,470. Okay, that's interesting. What do we got for, say, Bitstamp? That's in the 94 area as well, 94.67. How about Finex? Yeah, why did the Tether not go down as much? That is odd. How about Poloniex? It went down to 95. But Binance didn't. I can't understand that. I, I don't. 
it is as it is, but they're all like around that same pr uh, bit tracks. I don't understand this. Which other one do we have? Bit tracks. See, it's at 99 now. It's been down. How did Binance, of all places, not endure the sell-off to the 95 or 94 area? I, well, it is what it is. Maybe. Let me just quickly look at the Binance actual real page. And on the minute time frame, yeah, it's... I mean, volume of half a billion dollars. Okay, well, it is as it is. Okay. Don't really think there's anything to go over, so I'd like to thank you for tuning in. And I'll uh, talk to you later on. Bye-bye.